King of Fighters, Metal Slug, Fatal Fury, Samurai Showdown. These are the iconic names you'll hear time and again when discussing SNK Online. However, what seldom gets the spotlight is SNK's pretty big catalogue of obscure titles. Much like its rival Capcom, SNK loved throwing shit at the wall in the 90s to see what stuck, and the fighting game genre became peppered with tons of unique and creative games. On the Capcom side of things, we had games like Darkstalkers, Rival Schools, Power Stone, Red Earth, I could go on. And SNK also released its fair share of fighting games during this time as well. One of which will be the subject of the first instalment in a new video series I'm making on obscure SNK titles. Unless this video tanks, in which case it will also be the last instalment. Welcome to What the F*** is World Heroes? Now this isn't going to be a lore video like you've probably come to expect from me, no sir, this is going to be more of a general overview of the series, to try and spark some attention for it. There are four World Heroes games in total, so let's jump into them starting with the first. Oh, and before anyone starts sweatily typing it up, yes I know World Heroes wasn't developed by SNK, the series was made by ADK or Alpha Denshi Corp, which pumped out so much shit for the Neo Geo line of systems that they were essentially a second party company. And besides, when ADK went bankrupt, SNK bought all of its IPs anyway. Released in 1992, World Heroes stood out from other fighting games with its interesting premise. While it admittedly was yet another game of fighters from all over the world fighting in their respective countries in a tournament a la Street Fighter 2, the twist on this idea was that they were taken from all different periods of time, and were specifically based on real life historical figures. And how many of them you recognise will depend on how hard you paid attention to history class in school. Considering they're the main draw of the game, let's take a look at the roster before delving into the gameplay. The main stars are Hanzo Hattori and Fuma Kotaro, who are your Ryu and Ken of the game, as such is tradition with many of these old arcade fighters. Hell, even down to the AI where they have identical movesets, but Hanzo zones with his projectile more while Fuma loves spamming his dragon punch. Much like Hanzo Hattori from Samurai Showdown, he is based on real life historical figure, Hanzo Hattori, who was a revered samurai from the Sengoku era of Japan. Yes, SNK has not one, but two characters named Hanzo Hattori, both of whom are based on real life guy Hanzo Hattori. Keep up. Hanzo was a pretty insane dude, commanding a 200 man unit of eagle warriors and is remembered as a master tactician and expert sword fighter. And speaking of sword fighting, his real life rival was named Fuma Katara. Or at the very least, he's blamed for Hanzo's death in 1596. World Heroes Hanzo and Fuma's rivalry is a lot friendlier than what's often portrayed in other media, despite the fact that they belong to different ninja clans. Next up we have Jeanne d'Arc, a French swordswoman who enters the tournament looking to get dicked down by one of the men. No seriously, her motivation is trying to find a suitable husband among the cast. Anyway, she's pretty obviously based on the French heroine Joan of Arc, and if you don't know who that is then you're probably too young to be watching this video. Unlike the real Jeanne d'Arc however, she's extremely vain and cocky. RUINED FOREVER! Yeah unfortunately I'm not a big fan of this character. Why would you remove the aspects of Joan of Arc that made her such a fucking legend in the first place? Rasputin is a Russian mystic, sorcerer, and SNK's first pansexual man. Yes, before we had Ash Crimson, we had Rasputin, baby. He fights in the tournament in order to spread the message of love, and seeing as he's in a love cult, we all know what that entails. Strikingly similar motivations to Jean then. Man, Fatal Fury, fighting through a tournament to get revenge against a corrupt mob boss. Art of fighting, bashing in thugs left and right in order to rescue younger sister kidnapped by local mafia. World heroes? Trying to get they dick wet! The real life Rasputin was remembered for being notoriously difficult to kill, which can also be said for his fucking dickhead in-game AI. Jay Khan or Genghis Khan is a Mongolian emperor and the strongest warrior in his army. Obviously based on Genghis Khan, you, you know, like the disco group. I've really got nothing else to say about this guy, but props to him for always being a pushover in arcade mode. Also, I assume in the present day, he's joined Andy Bogard's growing Volcel army of manlets, rejecting the sexual advances of attractive women. Brocken is a Nazi cyborg, my favourite character to play as. To play as, I said to play as! I've seen a ton of people shit down this character's throat, calling him an M. Bison ripoff and such. In reality, he's more of a mesh of Brocken Jr. from Kinikyu Man and Rudolf von Stroheim from Jojo. He's also often compared to Inspector Gadget with the bionic limbs that extend and stuff. But as someone who has little to no experience with his inspirations, he comes off as a pretty damn cool character in his own merits. You know, I think I figured out why World Heroes hasn't been touched by SNK outside of cameos as of late. A lot of people in today's day and age would call it racist. But I mean, come on. Look at this diverse range of characters, all from different exotic backgrounds and cultures. Maybe you guys should just consider that sometimes racism can be a good thing. 
Next, we have the only character in the game that comes from the current time period. Muscle Power, aka Hulkamania, brother. And, uh, did we go back into the 80s to steal Hulk Hogan and bring him into the present? Wouldn't that mean that there's two Hulk Hogans now? Or did we just straight up kidnap Hulk Hogan? Or when does this game take place anyway? The future? By the time this game happens, is Hulk Hogan just remembered as a monumental historical figure along the same lines as Joan of Arc or Adolf Hitler? And lastly, we have Kim Dragon, who is probably my least favorite out of the bunch. No disrespect to Bruce Lee, but this asshole can get bent. He's got by far and away the most broken AI, which means you're gonna be stuck on him for ages. And being stuck on him for ages means you're gonna have to keep hearing his Yoshi-ass sound clips for about half an hour of your existence. And you know, World Heroes is not going to win any points for originality, I get that. But Kim just seems like the most uninspired dude in the game. And that wraps it up, that's all the characters in the game. You might be thinking, John, you could have gone more in depth on the people these characters are based on. Yep, I certainly could have. Moving on to the story, okay look, the more I have to research historical figures for this video, the more that I feel like I'm back in school. And the last thing I want is making YouTube videos to feel like fucking schoolwork. Just look out for yourself if you really give a shit. Hell, there's even a good video on YouTube already that covers their origins in greater depth. If I tried explaining it all myself, it would just read exactly like that video, except with a deadpan British accent and horrible quasi jokes. You might think you want that, but trust me, you really don't. You may be wondering if World Heroes has any kind of story whatsoever. Well, it does and it doesn't, in the sense that it's an overall meaningless function to have all these characters from different time periods fight each other. So there's a scientist called Dr. Brown, yeah, like that one. Although apparently his full name is Brown Sugar, so shouldn't it be Dr. Sugar? And who the fuck calls their child Brown? Anyway, he managed to perfect time travel in the early 90s and used it to go back in time to various time periods and take their greatest warriors to the present, pitting them against each other in order to see who's the strongest. That's a little messed up of you, Doc. Like, I could walk into a Tesco's and wonder who the strongest warrior in there is. Doesn't give me the right to take them all to my house and make them fight in a tournament. Moving on to the gameplay, it's your bog standard early 90s arcade fighter affair. Four buttons, some special moves, characters that fight on stages representing their time periods and countries. It's fine, I guess, serviceable, but nothing to write home about. Once you beat the main roster, you're taken up into space to fight this slime motherfucker called Gigas. Apparently he's a polymorphic artificial human from the future created by a mad scientist called Dand. A mad scientist from the future called Dand. Hmm. Anyway, his whole shtick is that he can shapeshift into any member of the cast and utilize their movesets, voice clips and all. Oh, you son of a bitch. Really? Come on, come on, come on, turn it to someone else. Why is he staying as Kim so long? So after you beat Gigas, you get a shortcut scene showing your fighter winning the tournament. In my case, Hanzo did the usual fight sexual Makshoto thing and dipped from the award ceremony because he had to get stronger. And that's World Heroes 1 pretty much. Not bad. Honestly, I think it's more structurally sound than the original Fatal Fury or Art of Fighting, but not exactly something I'm going to be itching to go back to. Next in the lineup is World Heroes 2. Really? Wait, it seems I've missed something. What's this deathmatch mode? I guess I'll give it a quick look. It can't be all that. Oh shit. Oh! Oh shit, my pizza! Oh! Fuck! Get in there! Pick up my phone, so I can get out. Boom! Fucking hell! Yeah, not that crazy bitch straight in the fucking head. God damn, this shit threw me for a loop when I first played. I didn't expect deathmatch mode to be so insane. It definitely left me with a good feeling though, after an arcade mode that was just alright. Although deathmatch mode is kind of a disturbing inclusion. See, I think the deathmatch mode is the canon mode of the game. Since we're fighting in an actual ring, which certainly makes it seem more like a tournament, I'm telling you, there's some sinister shit about Dr. Brown. He kidnapped all these random people and is forcing them to fight to the death for his own amusement. Certainly sounds like someone who could be damned in the future. You see what I'm saying? Uncovering the deep law once again. Who else is doing it like me, baby? Okay, so that actually closes my look at the first game. Next up is World Heroes 2. If you would believe it, the story goes, it has been a year since the fighting tournament Dr. Brown held, and so he held another one. This time we have six new characters to contend with. Captain Kidd, a rowdy pirate hailing from Skellington Land, based on real-life sailor turned bastard Captain William Kidd. Eric the Viking, based on real-life Norse explorer Eric the Red. Ryoko Izumo, a young go-getter judo practitioner, with a major wide-on for Hanzo inspired by real-life two-time Olympic gold medalist Ryoko Tani. Or Tani, I don't know, who went into politics after retiring from martial arts. On some Geese Howard shit there. There's Johnny Maximum, who is a badass looking pro footballer inspired by Joe Montana. 
and my personal favourite newcomer, Mudman. He's a shaman in the Papa People tribe from New Guinea. How far away is this, um, these Papa people? Um, <laughs> To, to, to. Although his actual inspiration comes from an obscure manga called Mudman, also about tribes in Papua New Guinea. He definitely stands out among all the other characters, with his crazy mask and those fucking voice clips, man. <laughs> oh yeah, and the Siamese Mutai guy, who cares? The character sprites have been given a few touch-ups and frames of animation to give them a much better visual presence than the first. But most of the improvements were made to the actual gameplay, with the whole game feeling a bit more streamlined. There weren't really any new mechanics added, but just sanding off the edges of what we had before. It's not amazing, but it's enough to differentiate the game from its predecessor. Although sadly they nerfed throws, which were a lot of fun to abuse in the first game. The game also has auto combos, which they don't mention at all in the tutorial, and they're essentially the only way to beat the game, because unfortunately the AI has got an SNK sequel syndrome and they're all massive cunts. Even on level 1 difficulty, I'm sad to say this arcade run was an absolute slog to get through, with the usual SNK AI problems where the AI challenges you on every single fucking move you make, frame perfectly at that. Ryoko is especially bad, good fucking lord! Which Pinhead decided to give this tiny 5 foot 16 year old girl Geese Howard style AI? I almost didn't bother finishing, but I pressed on. Mercifully, once you've beaten the six newcomers, you only have to take on four of the original game's fighters and then you're greeted by... Gigas again. Only now he copies the movesets of the new guys. After beating him, all the stadium spectators are brutally murdered by lightning strikes and the real final boss shows up, Neo Dio. His fight can be summed up as... <laughs> Yeah. I officially have to apologize to the likes of AOF2, Mr. Big, Ignis, Pell, even Mageki. Dio is damn near impossible with how spastic and unpredictable his moves are. And after finally beating him, what do you get? Well, pretty much the exact same ending as last time. Looks like Hanzo is as desperate to stop playing as I am. As for deathmatch mode, well, even that's kind of been butchered by this odd new shared health bar. As you damage the opponent, it's pushed more in their direction and vice versa. If you manage to push it all the way, they start getting counted down and have to move the stick left and right and mash to get back up. Kind of like a real wrestling match. And if they succeed, the fight keeps going until they either get knocked out again or the timer runs out. And as you'd expect, a lot of my death matches ended in timeouts. I like that they tried to innovate, but this is more Wii music than, well, whatever game you can think of that has a good innovation. World Heroes 2 is structurally sound, but it's utterly ruined by jacking the AI up to SNK god tier level, and it honestly left me with a pretty bad taste in my mouth. You might say, well, just do two player mode and it'll probably be fun. I would agree, but... Who the hell am I gonna get to play this shit with me? You know, I'm drawing a lot of parallels with Fatal Fury 2 here. Decent game fucked over by terrible AI that makes it less fun than the first one despite all of its good points. And just like Fatal Fury 2, it is viciously outperformed by a later revision of the game. Yeah, a year after World Heroes 2 got released, a new version of it called World Heroes 2 Jet came out. Jet, of course, being Somalian for 2, so the proper name for it is World Heroes 2 2. I'll get straight to the point. This pretty much fixes every issue I had with World Heroes 2. Improved mobility with back and forward dashes, swanky new animations for old moves, AI that doesn't make me want to shave my balls with a box cutter, that works really. The arcade mode now groups characters together in teams of three, who you take on one after the other in a best of three match. It's a pretty cool idea that enables you to fire every character on the roster without the game taking ages to beat. Given the way it's presented, I got the vibe that this was supposed to be like, tryouts for the upcoming tournament that happens in World Heroes 2 original. You know, as if to say that this game is a prequel, but maybe it's just a retelling or something. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Whoa, after beating everyone else in the game, the final opponent is yourself. That's deep as fuck. That's like a philosophy thing or something, bro. After you fight Hanzo, for some reason Captain Kidd is singled out and you fight against him as a sub boss. I don't have a problem with that. Captain Kidd is definitely one of the cooler characters, but he wasn't given any special attention in the previous game. Hang on, Underworld Blood Bash? Holy shit. Is he talking about deathmatch mode? It's really all coming together now, isn't it? After you dispatch him, we're introduced to the true villains of Jet. Zeus, played by Willem Dafoe, and his two bodyguards, newcomers Jack and Ryofu. Jack is an English serial killer from Victorian era London, using long claws attached to his hands to fight. He's kind of a strange conglomerate of several inspirations, primarily Jack the Ripper. However, his design also incorporates elements from the Spring Hill Jack, 
with his clogged appearance and club from Fist of the North Star. You'd think basing characters off historical figures would lead to more original character designs, but nope. Still tons of classic anime influence in this series. Ryofu is an ancient Chinese warlord based on real-world military general and warlord Lu Bu. I think that's probably how you pronounce it. Who was around during the Eastern Han Dynasty of Imperial China. If Ryofu is from that same time period, I believe that makes him the world hero's character from the earliest era, that being the late second century. After taking care of those two, we're faced with the final boss, Zeus. And would you believe it, another fuck-headed AI boss. He's not as bad as Neo Dio, tell I actually felt like I could hold my own against him, with quite a few stray hits landing on him. Despite that, every round would suddenly end, and I would be dead out of nowhere. Yeah, his damage scaling is ridiculous. At this point, I gave in. I couldn't deal with another quarter pincher. I used save states to get past him, I admit it. Hey, I played through the entirety of the KOF series fair and square earlier this year. I've reached my SNK boss syndrome quota for the year. Eat shit and die! Eat shit and die, bitch! And beating Zeus from World Heroes 2 Jet doesn't exactly win you the same bragging rights as defeating Ignis or Magaki gets you. Overall, World Heroes 2 Jet is by far the best game in the series so far, and they sort of just been steadily improving. So what does the last game hold in store for us? Let's move on to the final game in the series, World Heroes Perfect. All similarity to actual people or people and groups thought to exist is purely coincidental? No! To keep a long explanation as concise as possible, this game is by far the most polished and refined title in the series, featuring the largest roster, more fluid animations and fleshed out movesets. Every character has been given supers finally, and to my delight, they're super flashy and cool looking. Some of my favourites include Hanzo's like, slice combo, and there's also Jean's Inferno Bird move, Captain Kid just fucking hangs you, and there's also a uh, <laughs> Uh, moving right along. The presentation is really quite nice here. Although the character sprites are still mostly unchanged from the first game, over time the splashes of colour they're given and extra frames of animation really help them stand out well. The stages as well, definitely the best in the series. One of my favourite aspects is that before the fight begins, the game tells you what era of history they're from, and the stages themselves just feel so alive and animated. They aren't on the level of what SNK was making in-house at the time, but they're far from bad and feel pretty inspired. The AI is balanced out quite a bit too. No one's gonna make you wanna break your fucking stick slash pad slash power glove slash dildo in half this time. Yeah, some characters can be tough, but it's all pretty doable. I even got a perfect round against Kim Dragon. God, that felt good. All except Ryoko once again though, who pissed in this fucking girl's coffee? Luckily for me, this game introduces Hanzo's best move yet, the Fallen Fall Bitch, Bitch Knight. Knight. Most of the characters just get absolutely filtered by this, and I don't know why, but it sure is great. Just observe as Jay Khan completely cracks under the pressure of the Fallen, Fallen Bitch Knight. So after fighting about half the cast, we get a cutscene where Dr. Brown freaks out about the time machine going out of control or something. Oh shit, looks like Zeus is back and being a dick again, and we gotta fight him. Well, to my delight, he's actually nowhere near as hard as he was back in... Uh, oh fuck. After just one round against Zeus, Neo Dio teleports behind him and chokes the bitch out. Tossing him aside to be the real final boss. That's hard as shit. And speaking of hard as shit, Neo Dio. The fight goes about as you'd expect. After defeating Dio, we're treated to what feels like the seventh ending in a row where Hanzo just fucks off. Maybe I should try playing as someone else. Anyway, World Heroes Perfect does exactly what it says in the tin. If you're interested in this series at all, definitely give this one a shot. The lack of deathmatch mode is a shame, but the expanded movesets and fleshed out gameplay is enough for me to look over that. I think the keyword is fun. World Heroes is just a goofy-ass, fun-ass game. And you know, I dare you to tell me exactly what is wrong with that. So how has the World Heroes IP fared in more recent times? Well, obviously a new game hasn't come out, but the characters still get wheeled out of retirement every now and then. We got a decent share of World Heroes representation in Neo Geo Battle Coliseum, with Hanzo, Fuma, and Mudman being playable, with Neo Dio as a boss character. It's great seeing these guys with KOF style sprites, which really goes to show how striking and interesting their designs are. This goes double for Neo Dio. His animations are excellent and really sell the otherworldly aspect of him. Jean Dark also snagged a roster slot in the sleeper hit SNK Heroine. Considering the flimsy canon of that game, it was cool seeing a couple lesser known characters get a spotlight. It's just a shame it's in the same game where they get dressed up and hoard out like Barbie dolls. Another recent thing of note is that Storm Collectibles made figures of Hanzo and Fuma back in 2019. And you know, I could not tell you why. I mean, don't get me wrong, I think it's dope that they shed some spotlight on such an obscure IP, but at the same time it's like, you did these guys before putting out a Rio, Robert, Andy, Kadesh, Joe, 
Leona. Still, it gives me hope that Storm will deliver us some badass figures of the less popular characters. God knows we've gotten more than enough Kyo, Iori, and Minecraft over the years. I actually ordered the Hanzo and Fuma figures during the making of this video, and I gotta say, I didn't expect to love them so much. I'm a total sucker for Storm figures. Maybe I should do a video reviewing the ones I have. Did you guys know there's a Lost World Heroes OVA? This was brought to my attention by some people in my Discord server since I'd never heard of it before. They linked me to this webpage where a guy shows a picture of a World Heroes VHS tape with the Sunsoft logo on it. I suppose this must have been made when Sunsoft ported the game to Super Nintendo. Apparently it was distributed to people who answered a questionnaire that was attached to the game software. The guy who owns the tape mentions that because of his PC environment, he can't upload it to YouTube and instead posts a bunch of screen caps of key moments. As far as I can find, these pictures are the only existing proof that the long version OVA even exists. I mean, good fucking luck googling World Heroes OVA without a bunch of My Hero Academia shit clogging the results. I mean, in all honesty, it's not really an OVA but more of an introductory short to the characters, but it still looks pretty rad. The only surviving footage of this in action is from an old TV ad that has small sections of it spliced in with game footage. You know what that means, right guys? We've got some lost media on our hands here. Someone get blame on George on the hall, you know, just, just take, get fucking old Supersonic Q. He did an SNK video once. Do you guys want to know the single thing that sparked the idea to make this video and my overall interest in the series in the first place? It was this art right here. A great compilation piece by Agura for the World Heroes Anthology on PS2. See, since World Heroes was developed by ADK, it didn't have the usual SNK suspects making art for it like Shinkira. The official art for the series ranges from pretty bad to serviceable but bland across the series. Seeing this cast be masterfully rendered out by Ogura was single-handedly enough to bring the series to my attention. This man is a goddamn magician. But you know the worst part? This amazing art is exclusively available in potato quality. I have searched long and far to try and find at least decent quality versions of it, but my search has turned up fruitless. For some bizarre reason, the only character art I've found in high quality is Hanzo and Mudman. Everyone else, either I find cropped low quality scans, or the only other instance of this art appearing is on these crusty profile cards. You guys don't fucking understand. As someone who has dedicated years to studying and enjoying Ogura's artwork, it fucking pains me to look at this image knowing that all of this art exists in better quality out there somewhere and I can't have it. If you've made it this far in the video and are interested in any capacity in the series, it is our mission, nay our birthright, to track this shit down and archive it. And if anyone with any connections to SNK hears this, I would pay good ass money for an exhaustive Ogura art book. Each day I live without this art is poisonous to my soul. I need this art or else I will die. You don't want me to die, do you? I think I'm gonna start wrapping the video up here. There's still more I could talk about, stuff I glossed over that I could have gone more in depth on, but I wanna try and keep these videos as easily digestible as possible. World Heroes isn't as complex as its fighting game peers, but what it lacks in depth, it makes up for in its unique, colorful roster and just plain fun gameplay. While I can't exactly guarantee a new installment would sell, it'd be great to see the franchise come back in some way. At the very least, I'd be excited to see a World Heroes KOF team. It's pretty shocking we haven't already gotten that, with Savage Rain and Baruki 1 characters having been introduced to KOF already. And with how open-ended 15's ending seemed when it came to opening the multiverse, it's not like bringing in some World Heroes characters would break KOF's extremely fragile lore anyway. Here's to the cast of World Heroes, and let's hope they get a day in the limelight again sometime soon.